Morning everybody, Drew Zapier here. It is April 4th, pretty early in the morning. We are out here um, today. I want to get a few things done. This right here is the old Green Queen, if you watched the last video, where we made a split from the original Green Hive. This is the old Queen. I moved her to a different location for almost a week. I think it's been six days. So her and her bees have reoriented there. So now I'm gonna move them back, put them into that tan colored nook. You see over there to the left of the red nook. And we're gonna get them installed. My hope is maybe in one to two weeks is to actually put them into big 10 frame boxes, both of them. We have one more kind of cold set of nights coming up in a couple days. I think it's at the end of this week. I would not feel good about putting even as strong as this five frame nuke was, or is, I don't feel good about put them putting him into a 10 frame box with so much space. It's just not enough bees to keep it warm at night. So until we start getting these consistent nights above 50, you know, I don't want them to have too much space. So like I said, another week or two, I think hopefully by that point we'll be in the flow. Not really know for sure, but we'll know when we get there. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna check on the status of the green hive to see if they've drawn out any queen cells. Cause like I said, they're queenless as of last week when we took the old one, it was in here. We're gonna just double check on blue and yellow to make sure, it, see if their swarm impulse has changed at all. And then finally red today, we're gonna to be looking to see if we've got a virgin queen in there. I do not expect to see any eggs. But when I was here six days ago, you know, we had a lot of capped cells. We had one cell, if you remember, that was clear that a queen had gotten out. So it would lead me to believe that there's been a virgin queen in there for a week. She has most likely killed those other queens that hadn't yet hatched. So I'm expecting to see nothing. Uh, virgin queen is gonna be very hard to find. She's gonna be a lot smaller than a developed mated queen. So I may not even see her today. I, again, I don't expect to see eggs. I don't expect to see any of that. Um, it's just too soon, but we're at least gonna try to look, or at least see where they stand. And then finally, the only other thing I wanna go over today is um, I kinda wanna do a quick part two uh, review of these Apame bottom boards. I have some new stuff, like good stuff, um, nothing bad, about different ways to use them. And so I kinda wanna go over that, a different thing. A user, I'll, I'll put their name at the bottom in the video who brought this to my attention, but there's, there's a way I've been using it that probably wasn't the most efficient. And, there's another way we can use them to collect pollen specifically. Because again, as a bottom board, it's, it's probably my favorite bottom board. You pay for it, you pay double the price you pay for a normal bottom board. So, you, But it being a built-in pollen trap has its uses. So I'm gonna go over something I found out with that through a user. Like I said, I wouldn't have found it out on my own. But other than that, let's get to it and we'll see where we stand with everything. All right, first things first, we're gonna get this new mini green set up. Like I said, these were the ones that were over in the different yard for six days. Got up this morning, got them all situated, caged the queen so I know where to find her. right in here. Get these frames in there, get her set up. I'm gonna put it on time-lapse, that way you guys can watch it at a little slower or quick up speeds, that way not all your time's wasted. All right, so little green, the old, the old green queen, she's in there now. I, I know it was on a time-lapse if I didn't get to see it, but uh, put her in there with the cage. She climbed down pretty quickly. So I'm gonna quickly go into red, not gonna be doing a full inspection. I'm just actually checking the outer two most frames really for their food stores. I don't know how well they've been doing at foraging and that'll determine if I need to either give them something else or steal a honey frame from one of these other ones to give them a food boost because I don't know where their food situation is, to be honest. I know they started short with foragers, so they're kind of in a tough spot whereas this little green hive right here, you know, just them being almost a week at my other location. I mean, not only did I give them more bees and move them so all their foragers stayed, but 
they were bringing in the nectar pretty easily where they were at. So, you know, they're they're in no situation where food is in short supply. These ladies might be in that spot. So I'm just gonna double check them. I'm not gonna do it as a full video. I'm gonna time lapse it, time lapse it, as well as going into green as through a time lapse. And I'll stop on green if I see something to mention about the queen cell situation. All right, apologies for the smoke. This one's going, a lot of smoke coming out of that smoker right there. So, good thing, I was going through the boxes on Green Hive. You know, we started with that super up there. That's a checkerboarded super that, it looks like they're doing a pretty decent job drawing out some wax. I'm kind of surprised. Uh, that super's loaded with honey. Here's the, here's the main reason I stopped the time lapse. Show you all this. So this is the Green Hive. Like I said, we moved the queen last week. We've got one, two, Two for sure. And there, one, two. Future queens. You've got some well-developed cups here that, let me get my flashlight out real quick. I don't think there's anything in them. I think they started drawing them out, hoping or assuming that maybe the queen was still in there. Uh, that one's empty right there. That one. I'm trying to see if I can get them to move. That one. That one actually has some eggs and larvae in it, kind of. All right, so that's that's very surprising. Fix my hat. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. So, sorry about that. I had to fix my hat. Um. So this one right here actually has a little bit of larva in it. I don't think it's gonna really matter, timeline was, because again, those other two that I just showed you that are fully capped, those are gonna be our queen. Uh, I'm not gonna be checking anything else. I'm sure there's, uh, there could be others, but realistically, there's probably not. Um, they could have drawn one out in the middle. I'm not gonna be grabbing every frame, but again, these ladies know they're queenless. They, uh, they're gonna do everything they can to ensure those two survive and I would never want to just leave one in here I know some beekeepers or you know some of y'all with a lot more experience than me maybe you just leave one and make a split with the other one or something like that and that's that's awesome it, it's been working that's great I just want the insurance of knowing that if one doesn't work out at least another one so I would always leave at least two or three in there because again what should happen I'm not saying it's going to happen but when the one hatches, the, the the one that hatches first should kill the other, and then you should have a new queen in there. It's possible you could run into a situation where you get another swarm, especially if the hive's super packed. Um, TBD, or you know, we'll see if that actually happens. But for right now, um, that's uh, that's kind of what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna just completely put this broad back together and let Mother Nature take its course and hope for the best. And maybe in a week we'll have a hatched queen similar to maybe like what Red has. So. Let me put this all back together in a time lapse. I'm going to move through blue and yellow. I'll stop the video if anything's worth it, but otherwise it's just going to be me checking for swarm cups, anything like that, like usual. See if that impulse has died or not. And then red's going to be the most interesting one for today. So let's move along and work on that now. All right, so you probably watched that through the time lapse. We just finished doing these three, so green through yellow. I mentioned, you know, green, we've got those queen cells. Moved over to blue and yellow. I may have only seen like in each, just like last week, maybe like two, three cups that had nothing in it, like no jelly, just, just cups hanging at the bottom that I squished. So. You know, so far so good on that. Didn't really try to like hardcore look for the queens. I just, you know, I'm sure they're there. I, I guess I could have looked for brood, but I don't. I don't think we've had an issue of of that just yet. So maybe next next inspection I'll be more thorough. But 
like I said, so far I don't really see as much of a swarm impulse from those two as there were previously. Um, we're going to move to red. Uh, oh, actually, before we move to red, one thing I did want to mention, I should have showed it on video, but in the blue hive, it's kind of interesting, and this is just a lesson learned for all you new beekeepers. If you do decide to feed with dry sugar, um, which I have in the winter because it's just very easy, and my bees have taken dry sugar, no issue, just be aware that there is a limit of time as to how long you want to have that in going into the spring. I say that because... As anyone knows, we're in like prime ant season right now. And I had some dry sugar on the inner cover of that blue hive. I had I had some a little bit in the yellow and on one of those little nucks, obviously just to get them started. We're, we're really not in the time for dry sugar anymore. If you are still feeding dry sugar, if it's working for you, great. But, you know, the bees are looking for the nectar right now. The dry sugar is going to be a liability if you have it. Um, I would suggest you remove it. If you have any dry sugar out that inner cover of that blue hive again should have showed it to y'all but it was just covered more ants than i've ever seen and not like the normal sized uh black ants we're talking like the sugar ants the ones that are like a tenth of the size of a bee if not even more you know like i mean just so tiny and what was crazy is they were so established on that inner cover they even had like eggs and stuff like they were they had fully moved in this sugar ant colony on the roof and it looked like the bees below the inner cover had kind of made like a defensive perimeter to kind of keep the sugar ants up there on the roof where the dry sugar was and it was just kind of like hey don't come down here and they seem to be doing a good job but you still don't want an ant colony moved in into your hive just like any pest you don't want so i basically just took the, the torch and just toasted them all so they're gone for now but again be checking your inner covers if you were feeding with sugar or you know because we, you're just going to have ants this time of the year. It's, it's just going to be a problem. And, you know, now the bees have to provide double duty fighting off ants or protecting their own resources, honey, nectar, you name it. So remove that if you can, because whether you're feeding sugar syrup right now, you know, we know that at least here in Georgia, the honey flow is probably, or the nectar flow, I'm sorry, should be here very soon, probably within the next week or two, honestly, probably two weeks. Um, you know, you really don't need to be, you really don't need to be feeding sugar anymore. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to move into the red hive. We're going to try to see if we've got our virgin queen or not. And, you know, if we, if I am lucky enough to find her, I'll mark her with a new pen, with a new Posca yellow for the years that end in two. And uh, then I'll give a summary. All right, so I stopped the inspection of the red hive. There, I, I didn't find the virgin queen. I was I, I, there's no eggs being laid in there, which is what I expected. I was just hoping maybe I'd get lucky and I'd find an unmated queen in there, but that is a, that's a big ask sometimes, especially considering, especially her being unmarked, unmated, you know, she's not that big. It's, it's kind of hard to locate her. I searched most of the bottom box where I thought maybe she would be. I didn't see anything. I very well could have missed her. Um, she could have been in one of those supers above because there definitely was on the bottom of that middlemost super maybe two more capped eggs and there was one more opened queen cell like it was clear that another queen had hatched and gotten out so again when i was here a week ago there was one of those okay so it was clear that a queen had gotten out now what's interesting to me about that is if there was a queen that hatched out a week ago you would think that i would have found no queen cells today um leave a comment below as to what you think that is to me what i interpret that as being is either a maybe she did swarm with some bees maybe it was an after swarm i will say that 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 hive is still fairly well packed i'm not saying that it's not po impossible that there was an after swarm with that queen that hatched out last week but I would have expected after a six day period to have seen no queen cells capped, you know, like I would have expected her to have killed all the competition. But again, seeing that hatched out open queen cell makes me think, well, maybe she did just hatch a new one hatched out, or I don't think it was the same one from last week. I would have expected if, if a queen hatched out of it, 
that all the workers would have t torn it down because it's not a, of use anymore. To me, it's more realistic that that was just another one that hashed out. So again, I, I still think I have a, a virgin queen in there. I don't think I have a mated queen. I can't prove that there wasn't an after swarm, but I do think it interesting that the hatched queens haven't had a chance to eliminate the other competition. So comment below if you have a thought about that, but you know, it was something worth looking into. But again, the place is still packed with bees. I don't really know. I would have expected a lot less bees in there had there been an after swarm. So uh, I just want to go over one thing with the Aphame bottom boards and then I'll give my final notes. I want to go over one other thing with Aphame bottom board. I know it was months and months ago when I did a review of this, but again, one of the users on that video comment, again, I'll put that name below in the description or at the bottom of the screen who made mention of it of a different way of using this because my whole complaint was that you kind of have to decide you know when you're harvesting pollen you know this thing's closed up as though it's catching pollen it, I, I was worried about it basically being a bee guillotine um, and that doesn't have to be the case if you do something that this commenter mentioned which is on the back right here I'll show you all right, so you have the you have the tray, right? Here's our tray. In fact, let me set this down a little bit better. You have this tray. I'm sorry, my movements are slow because I got a bee crawling up down my back right now, so I'm just moving really, really slowly. Uh, here's the pollen collector, right now. Here's the bottom tray. So when that's in, like I said, this is where your pollen falls into this thing. Okay. You don't have to use it, but for the sake of this, let's say you are. And that's closed. Well, this sliding piece is what is, when it's in effect, the bees have to crawl up through these holes and that's what drops the pollen down into that bottom basket, okay? And if you notice, what forces the bees to do this is they can't, like, when, when this is open all the way, when the bees come through the front entrance, they can just freely go into the hive, crawl up it onto the frames and store the pollen. But when this is this way, they are forced to walk through here and drop the pollen off. So the way I was using it was it was one or the other. I was just, it was closed in effect, I was collecting pollen or it was all the way taken out, right? So if it's taken all the way out, okay. Bees are just walking in and out and then you use this little plug right here. You plug it, closed, done, right? Well, you don't have to use it that way. And I don't know why, maybe I just missed this reading online before I got this, but you don't have to use it in that regard. You could potentially, and this is what I've been doing now for about a month, is have it as a 50-50, and I'll show the back of the hives here in a second so you can show, so you can see as an example, but I've been leaving it about here, okay? You can kind of see this X mark, that, or not X, I'm sorry, this arrow mark to show that you know, you're supposed to load it in, in and out. Well, you potentially can just leave it halfway open permanently and why that matters is now when the bees come in okay they're free to take the pollen and give it to the brood because you don't want to be harvesting pollen from bees all day long they have none to raise their own baby bees but you could 50 50 take pollen from them because what i found is with this thing pulled back you would think that the bees would just walk in and never get in here but no a lot of these bees bringing in pollen still inevitably will walk through the front entrance, still walk all the way forward, and still walk through these holes and drop some off. But then there are some that don't. So it's almost like you're saying like, hey, sometimes I get the pollen, sometimes I don't get the pollen from bees. It just depends on what path they walk. So I've been essentially indefinitely leaving it like this and just, con especially right now in the spring, you know, pollen is in full effect right here in Georgia. I mean, there's just so much like covering your sides your houses cars you name it but you could potentially just leave this at 50 50 which i think is kind of cool and again the bees still get pollen yeah maybe not as much as if this thing was completely taken out and, and again if you, if you have no intention of collecting pollen then yeah don't don't use this at all you can just i still think this is a great bottom board even if you have no intention of collecting pollen but again for the price you might as well make it worth your while and collect some especially if you plan on selling it or you do use it yourself but yeah and, and and to be honest even with this thing halfway pulled out it's not this thing 
still in there kind of still acts as the plug. Like bees are not able to get through the, the rear when this is in and at all. It doesn't matter if it's halfway or all the way. So I just usually leave it like that much. So just thought that was something to note. All right. Well, unless there's anything else, you guys can comment below if you have any questions about that, but I'll give final notes at this point. All right, so that's pretty much it for today. Just kind of want to go over the thing with the bottom board and that there's other ways you can use it. Good day. I would have liked to have, you know, it was wishful thinking seeing I would locate the Virgin Queen in the Red Hive, but it'll be interesting to see a week from now if I notice anything different. I feel like by that point, if I come back out here next Monday or Tuesday, I might be able to see maybe a mated queen and um, that'll be awesome. So, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I, I basically just stopped because I was like, this is just, this is me just spending time doing something that I think would be fun to find her and mark her. Oh, I have plenty of time to mark her. I can mark her the next time. Not a big deal. In fact, I would honestly encourage if you think you know when your queen is hatched, you might as well just wait. Like, wait that 10, 14, you know, however many days you think is good for you to, you know, check in. Because I think it's just, it's tough. It's tough to hunt for a virgin queen. It's really hard. So, it's not impossible. You can do it. But it's just a lot of work. If you got the time, go for it. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. Like I said, overall, pleased. I'm happy that we've now got, you know, another mini nook with the, the old green queen in there. Um, no, this bee's not happy with me. Uh eventually I, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video I'm gonna wait another week or so to let this cold snap well, it's not really cold snap but it's like kind of like the last cold weather I think that's coming in we're getting some nights in the 30s I don't want to put those two nooks into a 10 frame box yet but hopefully come next week I'm gonna be moving them into bigger boxes they're they're, they're doing a good enough job filling it out and uh, shouldn't be a problem by that point I mean we're again we're April 4th is that what I mentioned at the beginning of the video April 4th so it'll be about that time but hope you all enjoyed the video talk to you next time y'all take care